Hey everyone, Laurel here, Minnesota Zone 5A. I'm just going to film a little update garden tour here. Sun's kind of going in and out from behind the clouds. Neighbors are out and about, so if you hear background noise, that's what it, that is. Everybody's kind of out enjoying the weather. Uh, I think it's humid today, um, but we haven't gotten super hot yet. It is still kind of in the high 70s, low 80s, maybe getting to the mid 80s some days. We've had a, f well, I think the longest period we've gone without rain is five days. Um, but thankfully we didn't get any flooding here, at least in my little corner garden. So that's great. I will take it. I just uh, bought up a whole bunch of clearance annuals and had um, my extra canna lily. There's a sale angelonia, pesto, besto basil that I grew from seed down here. It's been languishing. There's a fragrant bouquet heliotrope. And then this is the toucan orange canna that I planted up here just because I have all this space right now. I'm not going to plant a tree until next year. Um, this is the uh, caramel mix rudbeckia. Um, this is the only one that hasn't opened yet, but as you can see, it's about to open. It's been kind of fun seeing the different colors. I really love. I'm going to grow more of these, do a big, huge patch of it. And I did plant some annuals. I've been buying up clearance stuff. I need to ban myself now, but um, these are the Morning Glory uh, Volvulus. Uh, now I forget the name. Blue. Blew my mind. The Volvulus Morning Glory. Um, plants out here, I did plant some of the Dalmatian Cream Foxglove as well, which are almost done blooming. I think I'll trim them back, see if I get a second bloom. Though I started them from seed this year, so hopefully they will come back next year and bloom as well. Otherwise I would probably let them go to seed, but I don't think I will this time. I did the poor, I think my forever purple hookra are done for. So I'm glad I planted this Persian shield down here to have that purple color in this garden. And this is the new hellebore. Um, Frost Kiss, I think it's Penny's Pink, showing maybe a little bit of signs of scorch, but not too bad. And now we're past the longest days of the year, so this area will get more and more shade every day. So it survived, thanks to the rain, I think, in large part. Um, the white Bleeding Heart is starting to go dormant, turning yellow, so I kind of trim that back as it dies back. I let it soak its energy from its leaves back into its roots. Then these hostas will have a little room to spread out. This little transplanted hookerella that was stuffed way under there where you couldn't see. Looks like it's bouncing back. Some transplant shock, but it'll be fine. And then that hosta will have the fragrant bouquet hosta, that kind of bright green one. will have some room to spread out. I love the variegation on this striptease hosta. That one's really fun. Kind of watercolor looking. Another hookerella here. <coughs> Excuse me. Sun King Aurelia. I planted this last year to fill in because I just had this big gaping hole every year when that Dicentra Bleeding Heart died back. So the um gonna get some blooms in this Joe Pie Weed Eupatorium. And then hopefully today, I think I'll wait till this area is in shade, but I'll be planting the Dugroot Spire Arborvita in here. Um, I also, I had these ornamental cabbage that I started from seed, so I just plunked them in there. See what happens. And then I replaced the strawberries and cream ribbon grass with the Calamagrostis overdam, because that will stay in one clump and not spread out. Slowly kind of working on pulling stuff out here too. Um, I added my extra elephant ears in here. I've grown elephant ears and canna does okay in the ground if it's in a wet spot. I've tried growing elephant ears in the ground and they just kind of languish because we've been in drought for three years. But this year I figured, you know, we're actually getting rain. I'll plant them over here because I'm not, I couldn't get a hold of the crab apple I wanted to plant or at least not in a size that I can handle on my own. I can't buy a giant ball of burlap, 200 pound root ball plant and get it planted. So. Oh, that's okay. I'll do that in the spring. I also threw some impatience back here along with the Pecasandra. 
Some of these were on clearance too. I've got a, a ginger that I need to plant at some point. And then I got some of these, uh, those are Kong red coleus um, that my uncle got those for free. They were on a job site and they didn't get used. So he saved them and gave them to me. So I planted some of those in there along with the clearance and patience. Some more Kong red just filling in that gap for this year. I'm sure that next year these hostas will be even bigger. But things look good. Now that the sun's getting lower, I can trim some of these branches back a little bit. But I like that they are shading some of the shade plants midday. And eventually I'll have an edge here, so we'll see what I do when I figure out. Um, I'm not going to plant anything that gets as humongous as those spruce trees did. And their canopy was way at the top, so it's going to be even what I do plant will be smaller. Very different angle of shade, I guess we'll say. But I can maybe plant some taller, sun-loving plants that will help shade some of these. Because I like having a shade garden. Some of these shade plants. Rainbows and hosta, just beautiful. Oh, I do see, I think slugs and earwigs this year are bad. So I've been baiting lightly, but I might bait a little bit more. And kind of towards the end of the bloom on the jackmanii, but there's still a lot of color on that clematis. I can't wait till next year. Next year it'll be the third year, full year, and I think it's going to be spectacular. And then some of these little violas. These are, I planted violas here before and just kind of, they went to seed. And so they pop up here and there. So I let them. We got some buds ready to start opening on the bobo hydrangeas. They're pretty happy this year. Again, really lucky we're getting so much rain. This area is normally very dry little hosta garden that was newly planted last spring. Hosta and one variegated brunera back there. What I don't like is how fast all of these weedy volunteers are growing through the fence. <laughs> the one drawback of all the rain, one of them. Mosquitoes are probably the number one. Um, this planter's looking good. Shiny shoes is still poking up. I didn't move it. Just left it in there. We'll see what it does. GM I love because they have these beautiful blooms, but then it's just kind of this nice little mound of foliage when the blooms are done. And I've been cutting back. This has aphids, honeysuckle aphids. I think I will spray it today. You can see them on the stems. I've been cutting, cut back a lot of stems. Like, look at, I don't know if you can see that. It's too bright out here for me to really see if it's focusing, but all those aphids on the stems. I haven't seen any bees going after the it's not as bad as it was last year by the time I noticed it. But I do see ants going after the honeydew. So I'll have to spray that down. Probably today I'll have time. I planted almost the, all the rest of my annuals yesterday and I'm tuckered out so I don't want any huge jobs. That was tiring. These are the Rock and Grow Back in Black Sedum and my shadow putting on their buds. These just grew huge in like two years. They're massive. Definitely got a Rudbeckia bloom over here and it's all budded up with more. This one hopefully will open soon and I can, I mean, it looks just like that Rudbeckia so I can verify that. I'll trim back this flocks pretty soon. Otherwise everything's looking pretty good. The lamb's ear Starting to go over the blooms, so I'll kind of slowly trim those back. St. John's Ward is blooming back there, that nice yellow. And the Leatrice are starting to open. They put up their whole bloom stalk and then it blooms from the top down, or the blooms open from the top down, which is kind of different. I do have a coleus to put kind of in this spot here. I trimmed the dogwood really hard after the last big rain and it hasn't drooped since. It looks a little uneven, but I don't want to trim off all these berries on these long branches because they're starting to turn white and they look really pretty. So it'll get a really hard trim in the spring. Um, these don't look, these must be more slug resistant. We've got Fragrant Bouquet, Mystery Giant Solid Green Hosta, Autumn Frost Hosta, little mini skirt down here. There's curly fries, and then I do see a little bit of damage on the Vulcan hosta, that variegated one, but not too bad. This is a little patch of turtle head Keloni. 
that opens late summer with pink blooms that are in the shape of turtle heads, hence the uh, common name. This ghost fern's doing really good this year. It's an, actually, it never does this well. Usually it's burned to a crisp by now. But all this rain, I think, and now the honeysuckle's bigger and giving it a little more shade. So I'll walk back out. I'll do a separate tour of the uh, uh, container garden, patio garden. I did create this little area. I had some plastic bags down that I was just killing off the grass, but I planted up just extras in here. That is a um, cerveza and lime plant tranthus that I overwintered. We've got a few dahlias that were extras that survived last year. Some snapdragons that I started from seed. I got a marigold, a gramfrina. So just a few things in here, some extras. Eventually, I've been wanting to make a garden kind of along the shed for a while. So I guess this is a little start. It'll take time though. I got a lot of other stuff to work on. These are the Sweet Tea Hookerella. Some of my favorites. They look really beautiful. And they get afternoon, they get morning shade, a patch of sun, midday, and then afternoon shade. The um, Limelight Prime Hydrangea is looking pretty good. You can see it has had yellow leaves and dropped a few leaves from the interior. That's just because I transplanted it. So a little bit of transplant shock. But otherwise it's been looking okay, fairly minor. If it keeps going to where like half of its leaves are dying, then I'll get worried, but, but it still looks good and it's growing quickly. I love the red stems on this one too. About to form some buds, but now it'll have room to spread out so I won't have to move it again. Knock on wood. And I might have kind of random bulbs coming up here in the spring because I had a lot of crocuses and other small bulbs in this area and was digging up little bits of them as I was planting and just stuffing them in the ground. I did plant the Troutman Juniper in here. That gets 10 to 15 feet tall and only 2 to 4 feet wide. And it takes well to trimming. You can see how the stems kind of stick out a little or it might grow a crazy stem. You can trim those right off and won't bother it one bit. So I'm really happy I got that in the ground. I did plant it a little bit high just because this area retains a lot of moisture. Uh, and I know juniper is like a little bit drier conditions, so I didn't want it to be, and then we get frost heave. When the ground freeze and thaw cycles, it can push things up or make them sink down. So I didn't want to risk that. So I planted it a touch high and then the mulch kind of covered between the compost and mulch came up to the level of the soil. And I planted these annuals in here. We've got the um, uh, Rock and Play in the Blue Salvia. And then three Proven Winners Coleus. There's Lime Time there on the right. That lime green one. Let's see if I can zoom in a scotch. Um, the middle one is, why am I forgetting it now? The red one is Sedona Sunset Golden Dreams. That's the variegated one in the middle. So those will fill in, those get really big and they're gonna love the rain. The salvia, the seed seedling volunteer, is still growing around there, so it's fine. You can do what it wants. Um, this, another mystery um, uh, hosta getting burned in the sun. A few more years it'll probably get burned yet, but eventually this troutman will kind of shade it a little bit as that grows bigger. So that should be just fine. Came this phlox is still blooming and it still puts out, let's see if I can see any. So this is what it does. It'll send out one main bloom and then it'll send up little side shoots. So I usually, I, you can trim it all the way back, but I usually, once this top bloom is spent, I'll just cut it off to the next level and it'll just kind of keep blooming throughout the year, the whole summer. The initial bloom is more spectacular. That's really the big one, but it, it's never with really without color once it starts, which is very nice. These are sending up, I need to trim off the old blooms, but this is the Cat's Pajamas Nepeta, also sending up fresh bloom stalks. So that'll still be in color. This crazy looking Tor Birch Leaf Spirea, still crazy looking. 
and we've got buds forming here on the uh, goldenrod, dwarf goldenrod, solidago. And then the sun seekers salmon echinacea started opening. These are newer, there's a series of them. They've got like double row of petals. So they're kind of a double without having like those, um, what are they called, double scoop ones or the double where it's like, looks like a big scoopy ball of petals. So these are a little bit different where they just have a double row. And then I planted some annuals here. This is the unplugged, so blue salvia right in my shadow. And then this is the atomic purple gomfrina that I grew from seed. I've been cutting back this Veronica and the rose. It's kind of its first flush of blooms are nearing the end now, but it is putting out new growth. And this will keep flushing out new blooms throughout the season too. It has a couple spurts. The Wigella also done blooming. I did trim it a little bit, but these after eight lilies are budded up and gonna open here. And this just always looks so cool. Again, no bless a yarrow. If you've watched my channel thus far, talk about it almost every time because it's in bloom all season long. And the red um, night ember sedum looking great. I really love it next to the Anna's Magic Ball Arborvita. And then this is the South Seas Day Lily. These are so gorgeous and these are tall. I mean, I'm five foot 10 and they come up to my elbow. So they started opening. They'll just send up blooms now for weeks. And then pretty view in the background here too. There's the drumstick allium. Those purple balls started opening. Back there we've got the echinacea that started opening. I did buy a truffle up pink gomfrina on clearance that I planted kind of in that little hole in the soil there, that spot that's empty for when the drumstick allium stopped blooming. That'll kind of peak up. And then Leatrice in the background, just starting to open too. The Barbara Harrington Clematis still has some color. This is just a nice view of this spot. We've got the yellow blooms on the Zagreb Coreopsis. This is the um, Luminary Opalescent Phlox. Another one that got massive this year. I mean, huge. It's supposed to have more of a mounded habit, but it's more of like a tall garden flax at this point. Like that comes up to my elbow too easily at five foot 10. It smells really nice. Love that color. Really pretty view over here. And soon we'll get buds on the Holy Grail hardy hibiscus in there. That'll have those big, huge dinner plate size blooms. This is an aster that later, much later in the season will be beautiful. The Daisy May Shasta Daisy, just looking splendid and cheerful. And I've got all my seedlings in here finally. These are self-seeded four o'clocks where I grew them last year. So they're kind of like all around here. I just left them be. That is a zinnia. And I planted some of the Carmine Gomfrina back here. And these plants, they're kind of like see-through plants. Like they grow through other plants because the stems are really long, but skinny. So I like planting those where they might even get covered by stuff because they'll just pop up their blooms right through everything. And then this is my patch of annuals, seedlings and dahlia tubers very late this year because of the rain. It was just so muddy back here. We got that week of rain. Some areas in Minnesota, I don't look at the totals for the Twin Cities. I forget what it was for June, but like, South, southern counties got almost 20 inches of rain in June. I mean, that's crazy. We get a good amount of rainfall, but not that much. Normally. So the only ones that are big are these Cosmos. These all self-seeded from last year. I transplanted three, oops, kind of back there next to that Dahlia. I don't know which Dahlia that is exactly. I think it's the yellow ball golden scepter that I overwintered, the, the uh, tuber. But these Cosmos self-seeded, so they had a head start versus everything else that's in the ground I started and then was really late to get it going. So we'll see. Updates on that. And I keep seeing, I don't know, I have two. Um, oh, that one was struggling. There's just, you can't see it, but they're tiniest little sprouts back there. And it's trying really hard 
It's the same variety as this one, but I put the cage over it just because I don't, A, I don't want to accidentally step on it, and B, I don't want any rabbits or anything to come nibble off the tender shoots. Same thing with this Zinnia seedling. I just put the cage on it so I don't accidentally step on it when I'm walking back here or crush it with the hose. Nice view. Love this time of year. Love, love, love. Except for sometimes the humidity and the heat. We do have, um, this is Fireball Marigold, and this one is Strawberry Blonde. I've got flowers on my beans. So those are coming up. The garlic's getting almost, well, a few more weeks. You can see the lower leaves are starting to turn brown. I wait till about four of them turn brown and there are three or four green ones left and then, then it's time to harvest. So I have stuff ready to go in here once those get harvested. I think I'll prop up these snapdragons so they don't fall on top of the basil. But pea pods, I think the voles are getting at my pea pod roots because they're turning yellow and then they just pull right out of the ground and I know this is like vole alley coming through here. And I'm encouraging the feral cats to please come and hunt the voles. Um, but I did plant, I moved this pepper from the ground and it's starting to turn back green again. It was real yellow. And then I had this little nasturtium seedling. I think that's Alaska peach or something. And I am starting to see bulbs on the shallots. So they are bulbing up. I eat shallots instead of, in place of onions on salads. I have a salad probably five, six days a week for dinner. I just keep chopped up veggies, lettuce, uh, shredded cheese in the fridge all the time. And then it's just a quick dinner. I can just throw it together real fast after work or after I go to the gym. I've gotten a ton of zucchini that I also put in salads. I eat that raw in salads. Very mild flavor. It does really good in salads because I'm not the biggest fan of cucumbers. I've got some mulch here. Need to remulch this pathway a little bit. It's getting kind of thin. That patch of garlic, I think, is a little bit further along than the raised beds. Well, it's hard to tell, not much. The voles are not getting at my potatoes this year, thanks to my little table. So, yay for that. I gotta harvest some zucchini here. I did plant a few annuals back here because now the salvia is done. This is all it does. You know, it does its initial bloom, and then sometimes I'll see. You can see where it's putting up, it's branching out, but it just has these puny little nothing blooms when it branches. So it's an, I'm, I'm just going to cut that back hard. It just doesn't, the rebloom isn't worth it. I'd rather have it smaller and tidier, but I planted an annual salvia that is rocking deep purple, I think. And then I have, that one is unplugged pink back there, kind of between the yarrow, the uh, iris, and the sage leaf willow. We have this bee balm still cheerful pink popping through. The aurelia looks great. The hydrangea is starting to get some size on it now. That's a classic limelight. And I do see the visions white or vision in white still be started opening. And that one, that pink one is razzle dazzle. That has not bloomed yet. So I'm psyched to see that. Viburnum is out of bloom, but putting on some fresh foliage, which is nice. Hopefully it doesn't get completely eaten by the viburnum beetle. Look how shiny it is. It's just glossy. And a few shade plants. I planted all of these new, well that is designer jeans host. I transplanted that last year. It's in much more shade now, which it likes. I've got a looking glass Brennera, a hellebore, I don't remember the variety, crested surf, Japanese painted fern. It gets these crests on the end, which is starting to form probably come and trim the bloom, spent blooms from this Jacob's Ladder too because it has this beautiful white and green variegation. Autumn Frost Hosta down there. We've got Pink Fizz, Hookerella. I've been trimming that up. I think that these are a little bit stressed from the amount of rain we had. And then this is coming up too, Coleus Velveteen from Proven Winners. That one I grew last year in a couple places and it was really pretty. Raspberry Splash Lungwort. It looks like the leaves are kind of growing out of this twisted shape. It's interesting, I have seen, so you know when you go to garden centers and you walk around at several garden centers, 
only the raspberry splash variety is doing this, but it's doing it in the plant cans too in garden centers. So there's something going on with that variety or something this year, evidently. Love this texture here, the lady fern with the uh, still be blooms in the background. Those, I don't know what they are. They were mislabeled, but they were like three bucks a piece last year. So they came home with me. We've got little lime hydrangea. It's just starting to bud or form buds, I guess. That one's a little bit later, but the firelight started opening its blooms. So pretty, so it'll be bright white. Here in our climate, it's only bright right for a couple of weeks before it starts turning pink, the panicle hydrangeas. The cool nighttime temperatures are what triggers them to turn from white to pink. And in our climate, that's pretty much all the time. <laughs> it's rare that we don't cool off at night. So they don't spend very long white before they start turning shades of pink and then bright raspberry in the fall late summer and fall. We've got three Plum Cascade, well four I guess, that one over there too, Plum Cascade Hookerella, and then the Maggie Daly is still be finally started opening. I don't know if this will translate on camera and maybe next week I can come through, but what I love about the blooms is they're like kind of bi-color, bi-tone. They have like a deep pink center and then like a lavender pink, the outer parts of the petals are sort of uh, lavender purple color so they give this like two-tone effect and they just kind of glow they're so pretty let's see if i can get it focused here oh, it's too bright out for me to really tell but they are nice and lush this is definitely very much a low spot in the garden which is why i moved them here in an attempt to save them from slow death and seems to be working at least this year Pretty view behind here too. The back of the hydrangeas, we've got the, this is a uh, strawberry daiquiri dogwood. Man, that thing is a beast. I bought that for five bucks, super clearance. It had like 10 leaves on its five stems. But I took my chances and put it in and just let it go and it is a monster. Dogwoods are native in a lot of the US and they like moisture, they tend to grow along the banks Okay, Blue Jay, you are very noisy. They tend to grow along the banks of like rivers and lakes. They like, they very drought tolerant, but they really like wet soil. So that one is really enjoying this year, I'm sure. Same thing with Arborvita. They are thirsty plants with shallow roots. That's a North Pole. S Sir, excuse me, can you stop screeching, please? <laughs> Darn Blue Jays. <laughs> Anyway, oh yeah, and a nice bit. That weed is very happy too. That is a happy dandelion. But this Brennera is huge. I just planted this late last summer. Look at that thing. It's another variegated Brennera. You can see that pink bee balm. I'm pretty sure it's bubblegum blast poking through there. We'll walk up that direction again. The Geraniums are looking good, Pelargonium. Um, some of them I think were kind of stressed with all the rain, but some are looking better than others. I still have to build up the soil over here and plant that replacement for the Brunera that pooped out. Um, the Sensation Sky Blue Salvia is pretty much done blooming. I'll trim that back all the way and then it'll just kind of flush out fresh. But I love this little patch of Echinacea. You can see the mix that there's like a more of a red one back there. That's the original color that I purchased that like bright, bright, deep red, but it's kind of a cool tone red. And then all the others, all these pink ones. This one I really like. It has like multi-tone effect, sort of orange and like watermelon colors pink, light pink, deep pink ones. This is sort of a medium pink. These are all seedlings. They all self-seeded from the original echinacea and maybe cross-pollinated between all the varieties I have in my garden. 
So love that. That's so cool. Nature just doing her work to be beautiful. These are onyx hookerella down there. Uh, the geranium, by the way, is uh, Americana coral. And I have a line of them here. They got kind of battered by rain, so I've been deadheading, but they're sending up buds. Just starting to open blooms on the Jupiter drops of Jupiter ornamental oregano. And this will bloom really through the end of summer into fall. It's sort of lavender. But even when the blooms are spent, they're sort of the, just this dark pink. So they look decorative. They don't look brown or icky or anything. I cut back the nepeta that was here and planted. I got a few more of these sale um, safari dusk James Britannia. I should probably cut them back and let them flush out. And these are just so fragrant. Anytime I'm working over here, I can just smell these. The Nemesia Inca, or Nemesia, yeah, Inca Nemesia. And still some blooms on the Boom Chocolata. Boom Chocolata. Still blooming away. And I kind of like, well, now they're turning brown. But I kind of like how the spent blooms look too. Allium sending out there. I love their sort of nodding little heads when they're butt up like that. And the Monarda looking really pretty. Starting to go over a little bit of brown blooms in the middle. Pollinators love that. Love that hot pink patch. And that just started with a one gallon plant can. I think I planted it maybe four years ago, four or five years ago. Very, very slowly spread. I haven't had to pull any chunks out, but it's easy to divide and move too if it spreads too much. I'll dig it out and put it somewhere else. Got some snapdragons open. These daylilies also started opening. These are Joylene Nicole. They stay lower and more petite, but they have these pretty peach ruffly blooms with a bright yellow throat and they smell nice too. Oh, I see some buds forming on the Hellenium too. It has kind of nice autumnal oranges and yellow color. And then still nice and gold on the Barberry back there, that nice little pop, pop of color. And then these Echinacea started opening too. A lot of these are self-seeded white, except I see one pink one in there, self-seeded, but that's okay. I like it. I was able to stand some of these up a little bit more where the cats bolt them over. I'll still leave that support up there. So, yep, everything's looking a-okay. Not too much burn on this blue hosta, even though it gets a lot more sun this year. I did trim back some of the dogwood. It was really covering up. That's a Ligularia, a little rocket Ligularia to the right side of the mushroom. There's also a June hosta next to that on the right, and then a stained glass hosta, both more sun tolerant hostas. And then I have a columbine kind of tucked in back there too. I planted all of that last year. My sister helped me. I had a giant blue angel hosta that was in just sort of in a holding spot, kind of where that blue or the June hosta is. And it was just taking over. I knew, I knew where I wanted to move and I just hadn't prepared that garden bed yet, but by then it was so huge that my sister helped me dig it out when she visited. Cause that sucker is heavy. We've got some more of the Hookerella uh, sweet tea and beautiful green Hakanakloa grass with the red, that red variegation in it. I really like this year. Um, still testing. I'd say these are a better test since the cats kind of destroyed some of those, but testing the Aguilera blue Adjuratum versus the Proven Winners Artist Blue. So far, both looking good. These were a little bit late to start because they were stressed in their plant can, so they're kind of getting into full bloom mode now. Whereas that one, you could probably deadhead some of those a little bit. Um, these are Autumn Frost Hosta. Teeny bit of burn on them, but with the spruce trees gone, they are in full sun for the vast majority of the day. And look, they still look great. Like they're not fried to a crisp. They've got a few spots that aren't so good, but those are extremely sun tolerant. Now we're back to where we began. So I'll probably leave it there. I love those Joylene Nicole, even if the daylily foliage is 
ugly. So I appreciate everybody watching my videos, commenting, liking. Thank you so much and have a great day.